noon. American Anchor Baby at uh, noon today. Tomorrow he will be live at when? He will be live uh, 4 p.m. Because that's going to be when? That will be Friday. We have the fallen state with that mannish but pretty gal. Hispanic gal. So that's cool. It's, uh, it's 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific uh, Standard Time here in Los Angeles. In a couple of weeks, it'll be daylight time here in Los Angeles. So we're going to spring forward. Uh, February 29th, it's leap year. Happy leap year, everybody. I don't like calling it leap day or leap year day. I don't like it. Uh, Thursday, February 29th, 2024 A.D., Calls to get to, <laughs> and oh my gosh, I'm chuckling because um, I have super chats to get to read, calls to get to, maybe some stories like I had teased yesterday. I didn't get to hardly anything, um, but <laughs> it's the last day of Black History Month, and I'm really, really thinking about, but I don't, I'm not sure playing a whole bunch of black history music. <laughs> I was thinking of starting the show with it, um, but I'm not sure. And I don't know if I should go forward with it. So we'll see, guys. Uh, so since I'm not sure, let me go forward with the Let's Get Right Started on Guys with the Show! Nice. One, two. How you guys doing? I am fine. I have my Jesse Lee Peterson 2024 t-shirt on. And there is, this was an early prototype that a fan made. And I don't remember who it was, so I cannot give you proper credit. But thank you kindly for sending us these. For some reason, I'm not seeing my Twitter live, but let me know if my Twitter, my ex, is live. Um... It says, Jesse Lee Peterson, 2024, rebuilding the country by rebuilding the man. But really the line is rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. But that's cool. It's fun. Like, who knows? Who knows? God may do it. God may do it. Even though we say the country's gone, just work on yourself. <laughs> and by working on yourself, you're giving the country the best chance, honestly. So look at Trump. Look at uh, Clarence Thomas. Look at JLP, these, these uh, as Jesus called them, the light of the world. Nice. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. So uh, rebuildingtheman.com slash stores, I think there's a version of this t-shirt, sort of similar. Uh, the Fallen State Teespring store. The Fallen State Teespring store. That's how you can find something akin to this. Um, bum, bum. Let me get to a call or two and then some super chats and then we'll see what we can do with the stories. Sound okay? There are some sort of interesting things to touch on. 888-77-JESSE, 1-888-775-3773. David in Ocala, Florida is on the line. David, what's up, man? How you doing? Good afternoon, James. Afternoon to you. Morning, oh, morning. to me. That's right. Of course. Right. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Hey, before <clears throat> before I get talking to you, man, um, as, as I've we haven't heard from William in a while. Have you heard from him? I ain't heard him on your show or nothing like that. Yeah, maybe. Hope he's don't all know. Right. Hope hope so. Yeah, but uh, people get busy, you know. Oh, I know. I know. I just yeah. wanted if he was listening that you know I care about him. You know, he checked on me once before, and then what ha happened to the guy? Spoiler alert in the chat. Did he just disappear or what? Oh, so you know, sometimes people have to come and go. 
and uh, they're busy. They get they get into. He he turned his focus. He had to turn his focus so to other stuff. But he's he is my best mod by far. I um, know he would. And always, he's actually yeah. been around forever. He's the he's the one who this is deep lore. He's the one who created the web address silentprayer.video. Oh wow! Yeah, when you go into HTTP colon slash slash silentprayer.video, it redirects to the YouTube video of the silent prayer that Jesse uh, instructions on praying quietly. Mm-hmm. And uh, he did that. He's been around around a long time. A faithful yeah. friend. Spoiler alert is. Yeah. Yep. Well, listen. I had a I, I had a one of my childhood favorite football players passed away the other day, and it made me think of this. Think of this, but his name was Golden Richards. He played for the Dallas Cowboys. And he was your and friend, it, huh? Well, no, he was just one of my favorite players. Oh, when I was okay. A young kid. Yeah. When oh. I was a kid. Okay. It made, made me made me think of this story um, about when I was a kid when I got really angry one time and it's you know it's one of the best stories I got if you want I can tell you about it or I can move on to something else you wanted to tell me about this story yeah well I wanted to talk to you about Omar too but I wanted to tell you about what 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 happened with this kid that uh, me and this kid got into it playing football but if you okay. don't want no, no, you, you it's want... a story about anger. You as yeah. a, t- your oh, yeah. childhood it's, anger. I, yeah, I, I like childhood. this stuff. Let's let's okay, hear it. Okay, okay. All right. So, this is in Gainesville. I'm like, uh, I used to play street football every day, almost, you know. And so we're playing street football. It's three on three, and there's this kid on the other team. His name is Bobby, and uh, he had braces with headgear on. Stay close to your phone. You you you're getting touch muffled. Okay. He, this kid Bobby that's on the opposite team that I'm playing that day on the street. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. He's wearing headgear with braces. Do you know what headgear is? That wire that came around and attached to the middle of the teeth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing the stuff like that. Remember that? Okay, so anyway, well, he's trying to mess me up, and he keeps calling my mom the B word and the H word. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. And I told him, I said, hey, man, you better quit it, man. Or I'm going to mess you up. And uh, I let him slide one more time, and then he did it again, and they threw the football back to me. And I said, hey, Bobby. And he turns at me, and I throw the football. I hit him dead center in his mouth, okay, right in that headgear. Man. Bust his teeth all up, man. Blood comes shooting out of his mouth. Ooh. You were a, and you, them kids you had a, freaked out. You had a nasty home, huh? No, I just I wasn't gonna put up with somebody calling my mom names like that. Okay, but you so, but you've told me stories that you had a nasty home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I I did. I you know it was you know I just uh, but that was where I drew the line as a kid. Okay. Wow. So you were just you're kind of like the the blacks who overreact uh, to your mama your mom trash talk because that's just normal stuff for especially in sports. People in sports try to get into your head by making racial remarks, uh, mom well, jokes, insults. Well, I know that now, but yeah. at 12 years old, I didn't know that. I was taking it personal, man. You're talking bad about my mom. Doing yeah. Well. Bust him up, you know, when the kids, they they, leave, they run, man, because it freaked them all out. So now I just go home, and I, I stand by the front door because I know it's coming, man. The, I know his mom is you're telling down, You're telling you know? at the time, you after you got in that fight, well, that was not a fight. That was just a physical attack of that ch- poor child. <laughs> uh-huh. Poor, young man, we'll call him, because he's probably 12, right? That's a young man. He, yeah, he was about a, maybe uh, six months younger than me or something like oh, that. Oh, so he might have still been a child. He might have been like 11 and a half. Yeah, well, I was maybe I, I could have been eleven and a half too. I can't really remember. I was between eleven and twelve. Yeah. So, and, and so okay, so you're going home and you know you're going to get in trouble. Well, I know I know his mom's going to come down, right? So I just go home and I stand by the front door waiting for her, okay? Because I know she's coming, right? So I hear the car come down the street. I hear her get out, slam the door, knock knock on the door. So I open the door up. And she's standing there, and man, she was beautiful. She was a blonde bombshell, right? <laughs> and I'm just looking up at her, and I just let her go through her thing. She goes, I can't believe you did this. You know how much money you cost me, rah, rah, rah. I let her get through her thing, and then I looked up at her, and I said, ma'am, what you need to do is go home, tell your son not to call my mom a B or a W no more, and I slammed the door in her face. 
Wow. You oh, were yeah. a you were a, a bad kid kind of. Yeah, but it gets better, man, because this, this gets, you know, there, there's a lot to this. Anyway, so I move out of this neighborhood about a year later, and I have an aunt that lived a couple blocks away from that neighborhood, and if I could just get to her house on a Friday night, she'd let me spend the whole weekend there. I could come see my friends. Well, sometimes I couldn't get a ride all the way to her house. I'd get dropped off five, seven miles away, and i just walk the rest of the way, right? So I'm walking down the road. I'm about four miles away from my destination, and this car, this Cadillac comes by with the windows rolled down, and I hear, hey, that's David, and it's that family. Whoa. It's the mother, Bobby, and it's the sister, okay? <laughs> and they turn around. They come and pick me up. And they drive me to my aunt's house. Oh, so they're so they did the Christian thing. No, that's called respect, buddy. She went home and told her son, "Don't you be calling nobody's mom a B or a W four, but you crazy." <laughs> All right. So now this girl that lived in that neighborhood with us, she passed away forty years later. So now I'm fifty-one wow. years old, and I'm over cleaning this girl's house out. Mm. I find a picture of those people. A family portrait of the mother, Bobby, and the daughter. And I'm 51 years old, and I'm looking at this picture, and I go, oh, my God, she was just a kid. In other words, wow. when I was 11, I thought this lady was old. Yeah. And then when I'm 51, I see her again, and I think, oh, my God, she was so young. Probably like in her 20s or well, early 30s was, or something. Yeah, she was in her early 30s, like 30, 31. Yeah. And, and and that's when you know you're getting old, buddy. When your life, <laughs> you know, stuff like that happens. True, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, like I looked at that gal yesterday, the one with the, um, the one with the, uh, the alleged smaxing injury. Oh, the face? That yeah, went, she, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, cause yeah. I'm like, so she looks relatively young and she could be in her 30s. <laughs> Could be in her late thirties nah, at that point. She's a, no, she's older than that, buddy. She's probably in her forties, and that's no, no. She said point. she's not even forty. Oh wow! Yeah, so that's uh, that's the toll that whatever her sickness is has taken on her. Well, didn't she say she? A lot of that stuff was blocked out because you couldn't read it. Did she get that from taking the shot? Uh, according to her, coat? according to her, okay. that's what okay. that's All what the right. point of the story is. Yeah, I I blocked it out because. You know, to protect my channel because you're not supposed to say stuff about the schmack scene. <laughs> when I say schmack scene, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. I got <laughs> yeah. you. I see you to protect the thing. <laughs> uh, other thing is, man, you know, uh, Omar, you know, uh, man, that dude's a Palestinian sympathizer to the full yep. measure, isn't he? Yes, he is. He, uh, yeah. he really he does not believe that Hamas... Uh, is doing the things that uh, Israel and um, and America, I guess, the establishment of America, are accusing them of doing, such as using the using uh, so-called human shields, going amongst, going into the hospital, basing up in the hospitals, so that Israel, mm -hmm. quote unquote, has to bomb hospitals. Um, That's you know he you know some of that. So he doesn't believe that propaganda. And, he doesn't. Yeah, I'm sure that there is some overstatement of stuff, or people jump into conclusions on many sides. Mm -hmm. He right. also s says that they're not true Muslims if they um, are disrespecting dead bodies or ape raping, raping stuff like that. I don't think that Muslims are supposed to rape, but well, well here's the thing, man. I hear that it kind of happens a lot. I mean, you, young men high test high testosterone. A whole lot bred in hatred. They do have hatred for sure, and hatred ignites the uh, sexual passion stuff. Sorry, kids. Well, that that that's prophesied in the Bible about the Israelis getting raped during the Great Tribulation. They're going to come in and just Whoa. rape and pillage the whole uh, city of Jerusalem, I believe it is. And uh, you know, it even brings that up. I'm sorry, I used that word. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, but. The, listen, somebody wrote in there in the chat one time that I sound like I'm a Jehovah Witness or a Mormon, and I'm, you know, I'm definitely not that. Okay. I just study the Bible. Yeah. And in the, the Word of God says, if we or an angel preaches any other gospel than the one we preach, let him be a curse. So the Muslims' uh, belief is about an angel, okay, appearing to uh, 
to uh, Muhammad, uh-huh. okay? So, and the same with the uh, Mormon. An uh, angel appeared to Joseph Smith, okay? okay? So you're not supposed to pay attention to them people. In fact, the Bible says don't even get, don't even give them people God's feet. Don't let them in your house. Don't even eat with them, okay? So really? Got to be care- Oh yeah, it says yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Don't even eat with them people. So, but you Jesus know, ate with. Didn't Jesus eat with Pharisees and prostitutes and stuff like that? And yeah, but they weren't. Were... They weren't any Christ. They not. You know, not. They weren't going against Jesus. I mean, he wasn't eating with people that were. You know, saying you no, know, because see, the um, the Muslims believe that Jesus is one of Allah's prophets. Okay? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's. I've just, heard that. You know, yeah, that's not. It's funny true. that you mentioned the angel. Is it the angel Gabriel appearing to the, the quote unquote prophet to Muhammad? Muhammad. Yeah. yeah to what Muhammad, is it, when is that? Yeah. Six hundred A.D. or something like that. Somewhere, yeah, like six hundred two A.D. or something like that. Somewhere near there. Maybe um, six ten. I don't know. I don't know. But, I, yeah, you're right. I don't know if you're correct about that, but that but you're claiming that that's in the Bible that way, huh? What about don't if an angel appears to don't don't you know don't listen to it? Yeah. Yeah, that's in there, man. That's in there. Hmm. You have to look it up. But that's why you're supposed to study the Bible, man, because it says that study yourself to fi- study to find yourself approved, rightly <clears throat> dividing the Word of God. That's what it says, man. And uh, it says that in Timothy, right? Yeah, that's study it. to that's show right. thyself approved. Uh, yep. Do you think that it means uh, study the scriptures? Because it's not necessarily saying scripture. I think that it's. I think my. My perception of that study to show you thyself approved um, is, uh, you know how you study someone's face. There's a there is a there's a phrase called he studied she studied his face, meaning you observed the person's face and paid attention to it. I think that it's like pay attention, be be studious in paying attention to the your life, the present, um, and that See, way, that, that's how you can, uh, I don't know, show yourself approved. And then you, well, and when you, you stay present, then you can rightly divide, divide, rightly uh, divine, rightly know what the truth is if you stay present and not jo- go into your imagination and intellect and come up with cockamamie ideas. That are that sound biblical, but are not. Well, we're all going to find out one day. You know? <laughs> yeah, we're all going to find out one day. You know. What do you like, think uh, about my what my definition of study in that sense? It's not necessarily uh, talk pouring over uh, chapter and verse stuff. Well, the word gets sown in your heart, man, and it says doesn't. The, the Bible, Bible also say it, to to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I interrupted you. Go ahead. Oh, it's like I was going to say, in the Great Tribulation... No, 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 you said the... Go back to where you were saying, you said the word gets sown into your heart. Right, right, I'm going to quote something from you from the book of Revelation that has to do with that, okay? Go. Um, It says, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So where, what's the word of their testimony? The word of God, the word that, what God's done for them, you know? And that's why they're there. It says they love their, their life. They didn't love their life unto death. In other words, they didn't mind dying, okay? Because they knew the truth, okay? Because they're going to get killed. There's a bunch of people going to get killed in the Great Tribulation. Millions of people are going to get killed because they won't worship the Antichrist. Frank. And take, and take his mark. Frank in the chat says, Nice try, Hake. Thank you. <laughs> nice try for what? Uh, anyway, for my explanation of study to show thyself approved, I think it means uh, pay attention. As the Bible says, be self controlled and alert. Be alert. Be vigilant. Watch and pray right. so okay. that you do not fall into temptation. I th- that's, well, what I th- that's what I think it means. I understand, but it protects you. Like, for example, you can't get deceived. And word, by- word of God, like. By a word, he created the universe. Did the Bible create the universe? No. So the word of God is not the Bible. Okay. Fact or false? Fact or fiction? Say that again now. By a one word, by a word, God spoke and created the universe, right? Right. According to the Bible. So the Bible didn't create the universe. 
It was no. God's Word that made the universe, not the Bible. Right. By Him speaking it into existence. Yeah, so the Bible is that not the life. Word of God. Oh, of course it is. No, it's not. Yeah, the Bible is the Word of God. It can't. Well, the, the Word, word was, the Word of Jesus God created the, the universe. Jesus the Bible the did not create the universe. No, the Bible didn't. But the Word of God is was spoke uh, was inspired. That men wrote from being inspired by God. So God right. Wrote so that them. therefore, it's not the Word of God. People say people never say. I mean, the Bible never even calls itself the Word of God. Okay. Right. I'd have to. Look, I, I'm a little like. A lot of you guys will say, "All oh, scripture is God breathes." Blah blah blah. But it doesn't that's say. Right, that's right. That, that's See, <laughs> I gave you your. I gave you your intellectual answer. Yeah, well, that's rather than well, like, rather than rather than pondering the truth that the Bible is not the Word of God. That the Word of God is bigger than the Bible. Is is beyond the Bible. You want to go into the Bible. Well, here I'm gonna. I'll I'm not bashing the Bible. Here. I'm saying. No, it's, I know you're I'm, not. I'm uh. Saying We're that the people, people, somebody in the chat said bashing the Bible, but it's not bashing the Bible. It's called it's being accurate with. Uh, it's called study and rightly dividing the Word of God, which is not the Bible. <laughs> All right. right. Well, where this is how you don't get deceived. Okay, when you know this, when Jesus said, "I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life," not the light. People say the light, but he said, "I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the light." A life, no one comes to the Father but by me, mm -hmm. okay? That means that, um, you know, that helps you when you know the truth, because he's the truth, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, then I tuned there out. is I'm no sorry. other way. There, there is no other way. But anyway, let, let, I just want, I want to bring something else up real quick, and then I'll go. Uh, Man, you notice, I, like, can, can, are you able to, to call me tomorrow with this other thing? Because I oh, want to, sure. I want to keep it moving, man. I, I want to stay. Uh, I have other callers on this topic well, now. Well, this is only going to take a second, well, man. I'm gonna, you know, you know. No, I'll, no, no. I'll call, call, me. call you tomorrow. You, you okay to call me tomorrow on it? Well, I don't, I don't. I'm going to be out of time. But, you know, it's just, I just wanted to make a statement about that young lady that got killed in uh, Georgia. Okay, by that Venezuelan freaking, you know, illegal. The illegal. Um, okay, let's hear it. Yeah, I'm yeah, that's well. I mean, you know, it's terrible. I mean, this girl's going to the University of Georgia, and this guy jumps the fence, comes in here, and bashes her head in, and kills this fan, this this girl, this girl, man. She died by blunt she, force trauma. Yeah, he drug her out from her, where she was running and took her in the woods and bashed her head in. And I'm telling you right now, man, people are going to freaking freak out. This stuff. This just you're referring to this this killing that I reported in Hake News. Uh, at University of Georgia in Augusta, right? Right. Where this uh -huh. uh, gal was missing, and then she was, I guess she was missing, and then she was found dead, and it was by an illegal alien. Yep. Um, and CNN, I remember reporting on it earlier this week, CNN was very unclear. They did not admit that it was an illegal alien. They did not admit it, <laughs> at least in the new, well, little news blurb that uh, they sent to my morning update. Uh, mm -hmm. thing that they did. So, uh, yeah. it's very interesting. Um, yeah. and I, it's, and it uh, is evil. What, what was your point about it? Other than that it's just bad and horrific? Well, it is, man, you know, they got, they're, they're running through New York, stealing, you know, on little, motor other, other illegals bikes or whatever. But, you know, man, dude, it's just, it's, it's, it's insane what they've done. And they let 10 million of these people in here. And I'm telling you, man, it's going to get nasty. Because, you know, I'm telling you, watch, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. This isn't going to stop because these people, these, these are the dreads. These are the worst people. They let these people out of prisons and sit them in here just like they did with C the Cubans back in the 80s. Man, and, and uh, you know, America's finished, bro. I mean, this country will be done by 2045. That's my, pr that's my prediction. All right? Mm, wow. And then I know you got to go. Yeah. If you want a song for I black history. Here, yeah, go ahead. Here's a song. Here's a song for you for Black History Month. The world is a ghetto by war. Okay, because that's it. The world. It, they 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 have turned the world into a ghetto. Is war that's black? A, huh? Is war black? No, war's not black. But that song was written by black people. It's called "The World Is a Ghetto by War," and it's a great. So song, war so. covered a, covered a black song. Yeah, because war. war, war, war do, song the, the group war, war. They did. 
the group wore, didn't they do Low Rider? Yeah. Low Rider. Yeah. Are they Mexican? That. Hispanic? I don't know, man, but that's <laughs> okay. just that, 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 that particular song, that's the album. The album's called The World is a Ghetto, and the song's called that, and it's an ac- excellent song. Okay, so that cool. would be great for you to play for Black History Month. <laughs> well, this is the last day, and it's a bit short notice, but I appreciate that. That's cool. All right, man. You I appreciate care, you, David. Nice. Oh, anytime, man. Anytime. I always like talking with you. Yeah, me too. All right. All right. Be good, man. All you right, too. Bye. Ah. Ah. Jay in New Hampshire is on the line. I'm going to try to get to all your calls uh, as fast as possible. Jay in New Hampshire, thank you for calling and holding. What's up? No worries, man. It's, I just wanted to say that to David, I was... Well, you're coming in a bit rough. I have to interrupt you to say you're, you're uh, kind of like, are you on Bluetooth or talking in the car on speaker? Is that better? Much better. Thank you. All right. You got it. I was hoping David was still going to stay listening because I was going to help him with that understanding. I, um, almost, I almost went to you during I know, his call. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I sounded like it. Um, it's Second Timothy 2.15 where it says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightfully, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, the Bible is the word. Be from diligent. God. Be diligent. Right. It is, be is, diligent. is sort of similar to study, which also is sort of similar to uh, pay attention. Yeah. Pay attention. And it's to it, it's by watching yourself, by watching everything that's going on in your world. Yeah. Because the word from God is the Bible, but the word of God is within you, just like the kingdom of heaven is within. Yeah. But everybody loves their hell, and they usually, you know, don't even look at themselves. They just go along with the mess, not knowing that they're not in control. Wow, nice, nice statement. I'm with right, you man. on that, well, man. I wish you guys well. Thank you. You too, Jay in New Hampshire. Appreciate you. Short and sweet. Take care. Oh, he got me. I knew I should have done it. He already said goodbye, basically. Pardon me, I overreact to the clicks. That's one click. I have two more strikes. It's the three strikes laws, and then I'm out of here. Jeff in Louisiana is on the line. Uh, Jeff, thank you for calling and holding, man. What's up? No problem. Yeah. Man, I just want to make a couple comments yesterday. Not not about Joe or nothing, but when he called in yesterday, he talked about a... well, first off, he, he talked about Mark being preoccupied with black people on his mind all the time. Because that's what he calls in about. Well, what is Joe calling about every day? Talking about white statues. <laughs> yeah, right. But my, my second point on that was... is Part not, of the reason he does like, that is because I'm interested in it. Okay, but, but my second... My, yeah. The reason I called in was, is if they're going to turn on all the white statues in race to our history... At what point they need they need to put something out a statement out that says at what point what statue they tear down that we forget about slavery? Yeah, I mean if we're going to tear down our history and erase our history, what point do we forget about slavery? Yeah, they uh, they will never be happy, including Joe himself. Uh, although he has he's living his life, you know he's uh, trying to help other kids according to him. Yeah, and, I'm not. I'm not talking about him particularly, but right. But, but you're. In, but he he won't admit that it is. Wow, I'm looking at this amazing, huge coffee. Um, he will not admit that it is a uh, part of the blindness, blind anger that motivates the tearing down of these monuments and fo- phony appeasement of that blind anger. Uh, I get that those monuments may have gone up in anger, but they're up. And there's no reason for anger or there's no reason for changing it other than to appease uh, misplaced black anger. Okay, man, my last last point real quick, and I'll let you go. Yeah, yeah. Not about about white serving all that stuff, but it shows yesterday when he stated that he he wasn't against all Republicans and white presidents, no, he's against Trump, but he, he pulled, he liked Bush. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that 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 shows you how screwed up their mind is. Because Bush Jr., the only thing he done when he got in office, what was it, a year later we had nine eleven. His sole reason to be in office was to defend what they didn't do. He went to war with war for that, and he got Saddam Hussein. We went straight into Iraq. 
we didn't kill a bomb. We didn't kill uh, Osama bin Laden until Obama was in office. Right, allegedly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying that's that shows you how script they are. If they're just don't like like Trump said the other day, he didn't see the he didn't, he couldn't see the crowd because there's the lights so bright, but seeing the black people. I mean, they're they're there's just anything to hate that man, and he's one of the most worst country. Right. But Bush took a straight in war for to finish off what they didn't do because they didn't get a second term. Oh, because uh, Bush Bush the daddy didn't get his second term. No, nah, he because Clinton beat him out. Yeah, he was a one term president and. I, I heard that that may be because Bush, the daddy, H.W. Bush, said, read my lips, no new taxes. And then he got suckered into a raising taxes or something like that, or adding in taxes. I, I, I can't comment on I'm not sure why yeah, I got I was a kid. I was a kid. But, me too, but I'm only one year younger than you. But, yeah. but that's a whole point. That, that was Bush's, Bush Jr.'s main priority was to kill, get us. To get a Saddam Hussein because the day he went to war with him. Hmm. Uh, you know what? It did seem, it did seem kind of like that. That was my impression. I wasn't even paying much attention during Bush W. Bush, right? George W. Bush. I was in college, but I do remember. You? you know, I remember nine eleven, and I'm like, why Iraq? And then he kept on talking about weapons of mass destruction, and I. That's not his lie, I don't think, but it could have been. But it was a sort of a deep state. Either, mis- re- either misconception or lie, or both. Yeah, it was a reason uh, to get in there. All- yeah, an excuse, an excuse to go uh, finish the job. And Saddam Hussein was a, uh, although he was a dictator, I'm not, I'm not against dictators necessarily. Dictators can be let's good or Trump, evil. Let's hope Trump becomes one when he gets back <laughs> in. Yeah, for at least two days, right? One or two days. <laughs> no, I thought I thought I was wrestling. I thought he don't get kicked out of office. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's a solid guy. Thank you, Jeff in Louisiana. Take care. Oh, man, Jeff in Louisiana, I cut him off. <laughs> I was shame on me. I'm gonna call that a strike. Foul ball, foul call, foul on Hake. Jeff in Louisiana. He's. I think he was gonna say, "Have a good day." Because I didn't want to get clicked on, and that's beta. That's beta. Hake is all messed up. Terrible. <laughs> um. <laughs> let me read some super chats because there were some super chats that came in, and I I was so remiss in not getting to them. And during these super chats, shall we play this song, this Black History Month beginning song? Uh, it is Black History Month. It's the last day. It is leap year. We're celebrating. And I hope you will pardon me if this is a mistake, but I'm doing it now. Uh, this is Better Change Your Mind. (laughs) William Onyebor. 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 1978. So cool. Psychedelic, supposedly. And I'll read Super Chats. America, do you ever think this world is yours? America, you ever think this world is yours? And you, Russia, hey, yeah, do you ever think this world is yours? Russia. You, China. I think this world is yours. China? <laughs> and you, Cuba? Hey, yeah. Do you ever think this world is yours? Super chats with lyrics. Canada. Canada. Do you ever think this world is yours? This is the answer to the Canada. biblical question. <laughs> and you, Britain? Hey, yeah. Do you ever think Britain. this world is yours? Nice song. Indeed. This is still thinking so, my friends. Let it very change your mind. This is funk, hey? Funk. thinking so, watch your mouth. My friends, very change your mind. <laughs> because there's no other one except God who owns this world. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> you can put like if you want you can put me in the like in the beach or somewhere <laughs> or the car wash or something <laughs> the, the words are gonna go away so i'm gonna read some super chats it's so cool though i like it i got a kofi one without words Press one if you can hear me, by the way. Two if you can barely, barely hear me. <laughs> I guess, something like that. Hey, Hake, any planned modern day debate appearances this year? That's where I found you. Then the Hake report, and thus the amazing JLP. Smiley emoji. Click. Oh, you got me one without words. He or she wrote, wrote out click, funny. Because I overreact to the phone clicking. Hang up on Hake. Uh, that's cool, you found Hake through Modern Day Debate and found JLP through Hake. Normally it's the other way around. People find JLP and then Hake and then Modern Day Debate. Well, a lot of people find Modern Day Debate. Shout out to Modern Day Debate. No new appearances planned, although you never know. Check out thehakereport.com slash appearances. Popcorn stump cake bought a coffee a few days ago. When I applied to grad school, when he starts singing again, I'll shut up and listen to his singing, okay? When I applied to grad school for computer science, the admissions department said that I had not met all the qualifications for the program as outlined on their site. My GPA met the mark. I had underground undergrad degree, but there was a class I was missing. I enrolled in the class at local college, passed, submitted my transcript, and then was accepted through the graduate program when I completed. My point? I wasn't just let in or given the degree without having to do the work. That's an intentional caricature of affirmative action. No, it's not, man. It's not. Because affirmative action, yeah, you have to meet some minimum so-called requirements, but the requirements, we have grade inflation, everything's uh, going to H-E double toothpicks. I've gotten low marks on assignments like my other classmates. The professor didn't say, oh, he's black. I'll just give him an A or a B, says Popcorn Stump Cake. Exceptions to the rule, of course. But uh, there is a spirit of kissing up, a kiss-up culture in, uh, that infects academia, the media, social media, politics. And if you're not aware of that, then you're blind. If you're aware of it but don't want to admit it, you are also blind. So, just be aware of that popcorn stump cake, but good job. Isn't that kind of cool? This guy's African, I think. Hey! Popcorn Slump Cake bought another coffee. I like that Jesse asked the caller towards the end of this show the other day, a few days ago, maybe a couple days ago, who claimed that Soros was funding Nikki Haley. Did he have any proof of it? The caller crumbled pretty fast. Oh, well, I heard that. I'm pretty sure. What do you think about all the people who just throw out the Soros claim out there with no evidence and sources? Do you have any proof? Is he usually a quick way to weed out the people who are just repeating things that they hear? Kudos to Jesse on that one. JLP is always like that. He says, according to, he cites his sources. According to sources, according to reports, that's what's going on. On the point about employers offering health care, uh, you don't think that people who work a full time job should get health care coverage? Not from the employer, no. Unless the employer wants to. It shouldn't be by force. Evil government forcing that on the employers? Give me a break. Ask your chat how many of them would work for a company that doesn't offer health, so-called health care coverage. I probably, a lot of them would do that. Probably a lot of them are doing that. <laughs> uh. These are not pithy super chats, guys. I'm hesitant to start them because I don't know when he's going to come back in. <laughs> Everything this world is yours. France. You rich man. Rich man. You white man. 
white man. Black man? You ever think this world is yours, black man? Lead us. Lead us. You ever think this world is yours? Uh, President. President. Hey, yeah. You ever think this world is yours? Hey, yeah. <laughs> My friends. Better change your mind. <laughs> Stop trying to dox my car. We're in the car wash on the video here. Because there's not one except God who owns this earth. Forty acres and a mule bought a coffee just 70 years ago. Men would work their day job, buy land, build their own homes after work on the weekends and on the weekends, frequently without a college education. Yeah, I remember my dad was adding on to the house. He went to the library and found out how to do it. Increasing government regulations slowly made building one's own home more difficult, but it is still achievable. Thank you guys for bearing with me through the beautiful music. Can you imagine a typical high school graduate nowadays building his own house? Yeah, <laughs> not really. Uh, there have been, there are some, there are some enterprising young men. Do high schools still tr teach trade classes? Not really, they get rid of auto shop and everything. Uh, wood shop and all that. Chicago promotes its Chai Black, Shi Black Builder Program, Chai Black Builder Program, Chai Black Builder Program, that manages over 10,000 reclaimed lots, plus additional support programs so that black people can acquire land at huge discounts in order to build their own homes and businesses. However, most lots remain unsold. There are even free land programs around the, the USA with safer schools where welfare money goes farther or further. Why are black people not taking advantage of those opportunities? He asks. 40 acres and a mule bought at this coffee asking this. Maybe it's too expensive to pro protect construction from the Ahmad Arbery. Ahmad Arbery's. You know, the jogger? The jogger who was killed while jogging? <laughs> he was not killed while jogging. He was killed while fighting a man over a gun. That's a fact, Jack. Very foolish. Very foolish. And uh, he was poor, poor, checking out a house. Uh, he was caught on camera checking out a house, going on to their property that he didn't belong on. And some people do that. Some people do that. Some uh, well-meaning, some not. This man had allegedly been caught stealing a TV, according to reports, outside of a Walmart with some other young whippersnappers. He was stopped. Uh, this Ahmad Arbery guy was stopped uh, in the middle of a field. He was either rapping in the middle of this field, this, uh, with his car. He was in his car in the middle of a field on the grass, uh, in between, like, underneath power lines or something, maybe. And he's, like, going up to the cop all aggressive, all squirrely and aggressive, like, don't look into my car! Because the cop was trying to look into his car. You know how cops, kind of their job to be nosy, to check to see if you're a troublemaker or an okay guy. Allegedly. And so, uh, yeah, um, a lot of construction and a lot of uh, businesses don't go to high crime areas because they're high crime. You're going to waste, pour your money down the tr toilet. Thank you, 40 acres and a mule. Nice super chat. I have more coffees. Uh, Carver bought one. Hey, hey, not to dox your status, but the eagle-eyed viewer might have noticed some similarities between not a regular named Goldbaum caved in ladies' transforma transformation and some videos of the Hake report from before the schmamdemic and now very interesting. And he gives me a clip for quick reference. 
I will have to look into this. Um, oh yeah, Hake's, Hake's face in 2019 was much more fat. Hake had a fat face in 2019, and now I'm like caved in and old and decrepit. <laughs> Maybe I too. <laughs> you know, because I don't dox my vax status. Maybe I'm, maybe, do I look vaxxed to you? Maybe I look vaxxed. Hake, are you okay? You're looking vaxxed. <laughs> Thank you, Carver. Pretty funny. I'll, uh, I'll link that to you guys. Hake, uh, pre schmacks. <laughs> Posting that in the, in the chat there. Funny. Thank you, Carver. You're funny, man. Um, over, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. Ego is real with your ultra mega coffee. Let's see what I can do here. Happy Black Leap Day, Tori, Toni Morrison, first black woman to win Nobel Prize in literature. Oh lord, that's an affirmative action prize if I've ever heard one. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming, honestly. I'm assuming. I've never even knowingly read much. If any, Toni Morrison. T-O-N-I is a woman. Uh, writing in, for the New Yorker in 1998 labeled Bill Clinton the first black president. Southern poor, single mother, eats junk food. S-word outside of marriage. X-say. Sorry, kids. Drug user, criminal. Whoa, Bill Clinton was a criminal? That's funny. Uh, so that's funny. Uh, shout out to Jeremiah God darn America. He didn't say darn. Uh, Jeremiah Wright Jr. who led Obama. This is Ego is Real's uh, Black History Month or Black Leap Day. Who led Obama to listen to his thoughts that he is the black messiah. <laughs> Interesting. The exception proving the rule that senators are not presidents. Obama made the rise of the oceans begin to slow and our planet begin to heal since he brought $12 million. He bought a $12 million oceanfront property in Martha's Vineyard. And that he had Crooked Joe, who described a Barack as articulate and clean, <laughs> a well-spoken, with with, doesn't have the Negro dialect or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. To declare a low-income area so it qualifies for green energy subsidies. Wow, really? They subsidize people's uh, stuff because it's not naturally, people don't see the value in it, you know? A favorite of Harry Reid, light-skinned with no Negro dialect. Oh, Harry Reid's the one who said that. He was the one who got the black eye. Harry Reid, this old Nevada, I think, senator, Democrat. The first affirmative action president, Obama, had the most underreported scandals of any administration. Too big to fail? What was too big to fail? Too big to fail. Was he part, part of the bailing out of, of uh, banks and auto cars or something like that? IRS targeting conservatives. Virginia VA deaths. Oh, the deaths in the VA Veterans Administration. GSA parties. What's GSA? I don't know if I want to know. GSA parties. Uh, Benghazi, that was 9-11. Benghazi was 9-11-2012. GSA through April 3rd, 2012, The Atlantic. GSA threw an $800,000 party and all you got was the bill. Oh, wow. What's GSA? U.S. General Services Administration. Huh. Interesting. I mean, people are low... Um, Low class, right? Didn't we hear a bunch of stuff about the Secret Service during that time, too? Uh, Benghazi Clinton email server, Hillary Clinton email server that was under the Obama administration. Uh, Solyndra subsidies. Solyndra, wasn't that like a green energy thing that was subsidized and it failed? <laughs> Fast and Furious, the gun running scandal in which they, uh, Eric Holder was involved in that, I think. He was one, one who wanted to brainwash people against guns. Fast and Furious. They uh, sold illegal guns or something. They sold, sold guns illegally to, like, Mexican cartels so that they could do anti-gun propaganda. Well, this is what people were thinking, anyway. May not be accurate. 
and uh, Brian Terry, Border Patrol officer, was killed by one of these guns that they gun ran to the Mexican cartels. Brian Terry. Sounds like a white name, too, by the way. A white American Border Patrol agent killed. Drone killing Americans without due process. Obama scandal. Iran pallets of cash <laughs> uh, for Iran. Spying on the media. Illegal FISA warrants to spy on Trump. Kids in cages. Was the NSA thing under Obama, too? NSA catch and release. To be, TBF, to be frank, his border was more secure than Biden's. To be fair, TBF, to be fair, his border was more secure than Biden's. Also, Eric Holder was the first sitting cabinet member held in contempt of Congress. Yeah, because he didn't, he stonewalled the, uh, the investigation into Fast and Furious, I think. And so, uh, yeah. He should have been uh, impeached a whole long time ago, but the cowards were like, you can't impeach the first black president, and dumb stuff like that. Legacies lasting longer than Obama's smoking habit. <laughs> alleged. Well, maybe it's not alleged. Uh, all politics is local. Making a national spectacle of white men groveling to black... A white man groveling to a black man for keeping his property safe in a beer summit. Yeah, that's right. Remember that beer summit Joe from Phoenix was talking about? I don't, some of you guys might not be familiar with this stuff. It's a little history lesson, black, recent black history lesson, 10 years, 10, 12 years ago. Uh, that's where uh, he said the police officers, based on uh, what I've heard, acted stupidly. <laughs> uh, that was with that black guy who was a Har- so black Harvard professor who does the, uh, you were descended from slavery, or you were descended from a slave master stuff. Henry Louis Gates Jr. acted all ghetto with the cop. What the heck? Um, o- Obamacare, where people lost their doctors. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor, period. Got four Pinocchios from even, uh, the Washington Compost for that. Average family spends more than $2,500, uh, additional each year with the Obamacare thing. Wow. Can't afford to use insurance, funds abortion, funds uh, birth control, by the way, too. Funds illegal aliens, too. He said it will not fund illegal aliens. And Joe Wilson, I think, said, lie, you lie, said it during the State of the Union address. And Oprah pretended that was racist to call a liar a liar or to call a liar, accuse a liar of lying when he was lying. (laughs) <laughs> the hatred for this black man It's racist Evil Oprah That's when she said there, there are generations of people Born and bred and marinated in racism And they just have to die Evil woman, huh? JLP tells, retells that story a lot Evil Oprah Oprah unmasked She's the one who compared the Trayvon Martin thing To uh, Emmett Till Both not both of them basically fake stories. A whole lot of lies in the ma- pushed in the mainstream about both stories, Emmett Till and, uh, and Trayvon Martin. But Trayvon Martin was nothing like Emmett Till. He was not kidnapped or murdered. Anyway, um, accelerated annual cost increases from 11% to 18% under Obamacare. Wow! Last but not least, the Obama doctrine that interprets Article 2, Section 3 shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed to mean only enforce the laws you like on people whom you target. Yeah, selective enforcement. Selective enforcement. They selectively enforce the, this tax, uh, no, the campaign finance law against Dinesh D'Souza after Dinesh D'Souza embarrassed him with Obama, uh, Obama's America. 2016, Obama's America, which came out in 2012 to try to make Obama a one-term president, Dinesh D'Souza, American historian. (laughs) Why is Obama Boulevard so dark when he's half Jewish? Asks this person. Were were they Jewish? I think they were Christian Jews though, right? Liberals though, so it's all meaningless. It's the color of his dark evil spirit. Wow. Well, thank you. That was a Great and informative three coffees. Ego is real. 
not a potato bought a coffee saying test. Passed. You passed. <laughs> uh, not, a, not a potato also bought another coffee saying, of course, 33. Bought three, 33 coffees saying, of course, 33. Wow. Illuminati confirmed. Man. Another super chat from Popcorn's Thump Keg saying, the music made it tough to hear. What do you mean by so-called requirements as it relates to the admissions standards? Oh, pardon the music then. I may have, maybe I should have lowered it a little bit more or had Hassan lower it more, but we were doing our best. Most people were saying they could hear it just fine, but I understand. Yeah. My bag. Uh, what do you mean with so-called requirements as it relates to admissions standards that I mentioned in my coffee? The website for the graduate school plainly outlines what is required to get in. Minimum GPA, we have great inflation. Uh, undergrad degree, we, we <laughs> doesn't take much to get an undergrad degree. Uh, completed courses, quite easy to complete most courses nowadays. That's why I mean so-called requirements. I didn't meet all of those requirements, so I had to complete a class in order to meet the mar mark. Right. It's almost like you're scoffing at my point about having to actually do the, the work. You split your infinitive there. Having to do the work actually, having actually to do the work required to get in and complete the degree. And no, it wasn't an arts degree, it was a computer science. Dismissing black people as AA is affirmative action is lazy and disingenuous. Oh, so you're calling lazy and disingenuous people lazy and, you're calling, calling lazy and disingenuous people lazy and disingenuous. Is lazy and disingenuous? Um, unless you outline a way for them to prove that they did the work. There is no way to prove it. The, the way to prove it is to abolish affirmative action in both the heart and in which it can only be done within the person. So it's impossible to do it. It's impossible to prove that you, that you uh, did the work. Why do you want somebody to acknowledge that you did the work? What's wrong with you that you need that acknowledgement? But there's, you're breeding suspicion by having this affirmative action culture. And there's, there is an affirmative action culture. It is undeniable. So you're just, hey. You support the culture. You support the affirmative action culture. So uh, it is what it is. You're never going to shake that suspicion. You may as well get over it. You may as well get over it. But good job on this uh, computer science degree. Allegedly. <laughs> Barf boy bought a coffee. Hey, is young. Oh, sorry, kids. I don't like to say that word. Dumb and full of fun. Nice. Whoo. <laughs> and we're at the top of the hour. And uh, I, would, I feel... Is it, would it be black of me to go to another song already? I feel like that would be too black. Too strong. Too black. <laughs> it's a war reference, Hassan, there? <laughs> What's a war reference? Um, the last super chat. Oh, oh, really? Okay, I didn't know that. Interesting. I'm familiar with a, a similar saying that is not very clean. Anyway, uh, so let's get to some news stories real quick. The lead singer says it all the time. I didn't know this. And the lead singer is mixed, part black, according to Hassan. Cool. Well, thank you for your super chats, guys. Uh, I'll check for more later. H Hake is doing Joel's hand movements, I know. Hake is arguing with the super chats, I do it. I, I like the Super Chats for this reason. I like arguing with the live chat, too. And callers. Call in. Call in. No, he's black. The, black, the band has Latins. Oh, he's full-blown black. So the group is mixed in that they're not mixed race individually, but the... Oh, Latins are mixed. Right, Latins are mixed. Because they're part American Indian. Allegedly, maybe. Uh, okay. Nice. See, Hake doesn't know anything. Take everything Hake says with a grain of salt. Meaning, it's, it's not the word of God. <laughs> I may accidentally say something that it is from God, maybe. We like arguing with you, Hake. Nice. 
So speaking of affirmative action, and then I'll get to, uh, I'll get to a couple of stories and then a break. Because I need a break. This woman Kansas City police chief mess. I've been meaning to get to this. Uh, go into the other folder, I think. KC police chief woman. Ann Coulter posted this. Are there any men, white men, chiefs of police? She tweeted this a couple weeks ago. The 15th of February. I'm angry, says this Kansas City police chief woman. Purportedly white. She's the chief. Chiefess? Isn't there a woman name for... What's the chief's wife's name? Anyway, Kansas City police chief S. Chiefess speaks out after shooting the shooting at the chiefs, Indian chiefs, you know. Not to be confused with police chiefs. Uh, Indian Chiefs is their football team. The Kansas City Indian Chiefs. <laughs> American Indian Chiefs. Not India Indian. American Indian. You know, the so-called Native American. Indigenous people's Chiefs. Um, Super Bowl parade. Because they won the Super Bowl! We won the Super Bowl! Blam, 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 blam. And they killed a, a gal. A mother. I heard that it was a black adult. And Coulter, are there any white men chiefs of police? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Black pl- chiefs of police, female chiefs of police. It's ridiculous. The white men are so often much more capable, competent, fair. Not into their false identity, shallow identity stuff. Just by the book, the law. Or outside the box, thinking outside the box. But what a shame. That gal. You think she could beat up Hake? If she had to? If Hake got unruly? I don't know. A woman police chief, affirmative action. Yes, blacks, affirmative action includes women. Abolish affirmative action. Women, ladies, you belong, but not there. You belong. You are enough. (laughs) But not here. You're not enough for that. Look at the man standing behind her. Oh, the world. I'm shaking my head. Isn't it in Memphis or Tennessee or one of those places, one of those black air, black heavy areas, isn't there like a chief of police who got her gun stolen out of her car and supposedly it was locked in a box, but it got stolen out of her car while she was at a store or something like that? <sighs> Ridiculous. It was some black woman who was some leader of some thing. And Memphis crime out of control. Ridiculous. Oh, but let's go after the guns. Let's go after the guns, not the people. Ridiculous. Speaking of crime, Negro crime rate, 1958 article from Time Magazine. Is this real? It's a screenshot of a purported article. Let's see what this is called. Negro Crime Rate, 1958, Time Magazine. I saw this on X. National Affairs, the Negro Crime Rate, a Failure in Integration, uh, published Monday, uh, April 21st, the year 1958, A.D., the year of our Lord. They are afraid to say so in public, but many of the North's big city mayors groan in private, according to this purported report, Uh, That their biggest and most worrisome problem is the crime rate among Negroes, the black Americans. They were called Negroes back then. That's why I don't hold it against Mark. You know, some of you guys think that every word Mark says, Mark, my caller from Los Angeles, is vitriolic and trying to get a reaction. No, I think that he really, that's how he refers to uh, black Americans. A lot of, that's how they were called. 
and he's kind of old school like that. So don't be reading way into the things that people say. Just FYI, guys. Kind of like those anti-vaxxers read way into stuff that Hake said that was, he, was not meant any harm whatsoever about that gal who got the Schmaxine injury, allegedly. Uh, in uh, 1,551 U.S. cities, reads this Time magazine purported article, purported Time magazine article. Is this real? I'm asking. Uh, among the FBI tally for 1956, Negroes making up, this is before the so-called civil rights movement, but the rumblings were there. I mean, the rumblings were there since before world, uh, before the civil war, so-called civil war. Communism? Making up 10% of the U.S. population. Accounted for about, uh, 30% of all arrests. 60% of all arrests for crimes include, involving violence or threat of bodily harm. Murder, non-negligent manslaughter, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault. Wow. In one city after another, the figures, where they are not hidden or suppressed by politicians, reveal a shocking pattern. Wow, so it was, so it's been happening for a long time. I think that's 1956, right? Uh, So this is before the civil rights movement gave the full-blown green light to the single women, single mothers. But single mothers were already happening because by 1963 or 65, right? There was a... The Negro family, um, J. Patrick Moynihan, something like that, a Democrat, wrote wrote this report the Moynihan report, that the family, the black family was in crisis because it was at something like 25%, right? 20, I think 25% out of wedlock births in the 60s. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. And now white out of wedlock birth is way, ab- is above 25%. It's like 30 or, or more percent. I don't know if that's non-Hispanic white, or whites, including white Hispanics, so-called white Hispanics. Probably includes Italians and Irish. (laughs) Uh, And maybe even Jewish people. (laughs) It's crazy. I'm shaking my head about that. And so, um, yeah, the, the violence and anger was there even, the seeds of violence and anger were there ripe for the, uh, the exploitation by the evil communist so-called civil rights movement. So sick, huh? Wow. Moving forward, I mentioned um, the out-of-wedlock birth rates regarding this black crime. Uh, speaking of out-of-wedlock births, or out, S-word out of wedlock, go into the news folder, Hassan. There was this wedding, delivery room wedding. And you know how I mentioned that the white out of wedlock birth rate uh, nowadays is past when it was a, the black out of wedlock birth rate, when the black out of wedlock birth rate was a crisis decades ago, many decades ago in the 60s or whenever that was. Look at this man, a strapping young man putting a wedding ring, not well, not that well, dressed about a little bit better than Hake, (laughs) on the Hake report. This is, correct me if I'm wrong, is that woman pregnant or delivering a baby or had delivered a baby or what? This is a couple marries, this is celebrated by CNN, they think that this is cute, I think. Unless they think this is outrageous and evil. This man with tattoos on his arm. And there, is that guy a, uh, the guy standing kind of behind them, be- between them, is he supposed to be a minister dr- wearing a hoodie? White? The whites dress so casually now. I feel like that's a, <laughs> pardon me, guys. I love the Jews, but this is like a Jewish conspiracy. <laughs> because uh, Levi Strauss, not a Christian, made Levi jeans, and now everybody's wearing Levi jeans. <laughs> and that's too casual. I'm wearing jeans right now. They're not Levi's, though. They're Christian jeans. <laughs> no. Nah. 
Um, but look at this, and this w woman doesn't look very brightly to me. She doesn't look like a maiden. Virgin bride. These are, it's a white couple. Purportedly white. Getting so-called married. A Missouri woman in labor got married in a wedding gown made of the hospital's quote-unquote finest sheets. So they wanted to get married after they, after she, or while she's uh, pregnant, making the baby. I don't know if it's doing the right thing at that point. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Might be ill-advised. They took a picture of it, they took video of it. Bride in labor gets married in a wedding gown of hospitals, hospital sheets wedding gown. She's all smiling in this photograph we're looking at. Look at the ruddy-faced so-called minister. Is it a minister? He has a phone in his hand and a notepad. Not a Bible or anything like that. <laughs> Terrible! A sign of the times. Protestant cringe never fails, says Zorak90. I'm reading the chat here. Yeah. The kind of wedding little girls dream of, says Terry. Indeed. Liberal geekies, says Sion. Yeah. Not good. So, they are celebrating shamelessness, in my opinion. It is not just the blacks who are so shameless now. I mean, the blacks are like on a whole different level of shameless sometimes. I mean, with the entertainment stuff. And, cr and crime and stuff like that. But the shamelessness is spreading. The, uh, the um, acceptance of wrongdoing and, and, and promoting it. I mean, it's not wrong to get married necessarily. But they... How did she get pregnant? Did she... Did she have the S word? Out of wedlock? <laughs> I'm guessing. Maybe they should have done that nine months ago, says GMD Jim. Yeah, because nine months ago she wouldn't... Would have been the first time they had the S word. And then she got pregnant. He has a phone in his hand and a notepad. Important, says I see. Hake, who says Hake is so dry sometimes. Or he said that in the past. Yeah, I know. I, I... Karen Williams says, Hake, ask Nick, does he want to marry me? Hey, uh, Karen Williams, download Skype on your phone or your computer so that you can dial the 888-77-JESSE number. Maybe it'll work. Try it out. Thank you, Hassan. That's... Are you getting my point? It's, uh, they think it's cute. But it's, it's a sign of moral decline. Uh, and they don't see that it's... They either don't see that it's immoral because so many generations have been brainwashed into S-word out of wedlock. They have no clue. The people, they think... The blacks of the black Christians who know that it's wrong, they'll... They've been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. One, one black young man was on the Jesse Lee Peterson show and he admitted to having the S word out of wedlock, right? Or he said it out loud. And he said, I'm human. <laughs> that doesn't mean that you have to have the S word out of wedlock. You have a mindset of, of can't help it. Watch your mind. It's kind of like crossing that line. It's too easy to cross. It's because of your mind. Mind is weak. Morals are a funny thing. Sarah was 14 years old when she conceived. Says Copper Pot. Sarah who? So humans have no self-control, which is part of the fruit of the spirit. This fruit of the spirit is self-control. Exactly, King Glizzard. Thank you. You were on the, the point better than Hake. Keith from Illinois is on the line. Keith, thank you for calling and holding there. What's up? Hey, I was uh, listening to you to give the report on the um, the black crime and you know how it grew since a little bit before um, civil fake civil right movement. Yeah, um, yeah. And I noticed that if, if everybody pay attention, it was the Democrat policies 
that took the jobs out of the inner cities so that these people figured the only way they could survive is crime, you know, selling dope in gangs. It's, it's like it's like they, they give them a little scraps so they can commit crime, you know, through welfare. Because think about it, there ain't no jobs. I mean, you look at any inner cities, there is no manufacturing. There is no jobs. There's, yeah, there's and it's because of their crime. Right. Because, yep. it's, because it's a of vicious policies, circle. Yep. Yeah, so there you go the policies and, and then the crime. But these people still elect these, these black Democrats that have kept them on the plantation worse to me, not to me, worse than the plantation of slavery because right now they go yeah. to prison, they die in prison, they yep. die of obesity, they die of cancer, they're dying and killing each other all the time. This wasn't this bad doing slavery. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you're not, I wasn't. I wasn't around doing slavery. I don't know. I'm right. Just, 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 I wasn't there, but I know right now. But common I'm sense wise, how, common sense wise, slavery did not encourage the black Americans, or or enable them to be. It didn't necessarily, anyway, enable them to be immoral. Right. Right. It may have. It and may have. Know. People claim that it separated. Uh, many families or some families mm -hmm. in some mm -hmm. cases it did in many cases they kept the families together because they worked better together right. as right. when they had their families well, but, well, well, what's the difference between what prison doing now prison yeah you, you, the average the Prisons, average, the average it's the even average worse because young person is going to prison it's, they're separated from their children because they don't have jobs because of the because of the democratic and the black the, the, the church and the black policy what, I'm trying to tell, tell people what's the difference I, I see it worse now it is even worse even though I wasn't back then I'm, I wasn't back then yeah yeah. It seems it seems like it's worse now because they wasn't killing each other like they were uh, on a plantation. Okay, yeah. they wasn't doing that. They 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 wasn't pimping each other. They wasn't pimping. They wasn't giving each other drugs. Yeah. They wasn't they wasn't uh you know like putting atrocities on each other the way it, it, it seems like now. It wasn't then. Seems like it's worse now than they ever could have been on a plantation. I know that's that seems like a logical assumption to me, Keith. In Illinois, you remind me of, uh, I mentioned Nevada earlier this hour, Harry Reid of Nevada. He got in this fight with these Nevada ranchers um, mm -hmm. who were, they formed a militia to protect what they thought was their land against the federal government, Bureau of Land Management, BLM, not mm -hmm. to be confused, Black Lives Matter. And Clyde, Cliven Bundy, not Clyde, I think his name was Cliven Bundy, the, uh, patriarch of that family with the militia said I often think that uh, black Americans were better off when they were working in the fields they were working they had families they had more moral morality mm -hmm. maybe more hap more be maybe happier because today mm -hmm. they're angry crime and yeah. he said yeah. all the same things that you're saying and you know what's right. what's what's uh, evil about what the reaction to that, to that true statement, that fair and true and loving statement to Clive and Bundy was, uh, there were a whole lot of conservative mainstream people who abandoned Clive and Bundy over that true remark and disavowed him for loving the blacks enough to tell the truth about that situation. Because blacks love to cry about how evil slavery was as if they have any clue. They have no firsthand experience nor any common sense. Um, Sean Hannity, and I like Sean Hannity. Uh, Glenn mm. Beck, and I like Glenn mm. Beck. Those guys yeah. abandoned Clive and Bundy over that. They were with him, they were like supporting him. They're like, yeah, you got your, uh, you got your individual land rights over the evil government. But they abandoned him because he said something about the blacks that the blacks are angry, got angry about and the mainstream media pretends was, it was a racist statement. It right, was a loving right, statement. Right, right. Yeah. That's what they do. That's what they do. It's just like blacks can go down to the Democrats and in their inner cities or their government and say, hey, we want better schools. We want trade schools. We want better infrastructure. We want uh, you know, our children to be educated. The Department of Education has failed this country ever since it was invented by Jimmy Carter, a Democrat, in 1979. Again, a Democrat. 
They took oh, away yeah. all the uh, trade schools. They took away all the trade schools. Oh, wow. That means the black man was used to working with his hands, right? Yeah. And he, was, there was how many black plumbers and, and electricians and, and pipe fitters you see? Hardly any. Just hardly any. But back in the, in, in the 70s and the 60s, there, there were quite a few of them because, you know, they worked in manufacturing or they had a trade. That's what they did for a living. Wow. So Jimmy Carter took that out. He took that out knowing what he was doing. In 1979, he took that out. He brought in welfare. Then they brought in crack. I mean, you can see the systematic, uh, you know, domino effect of, of the black family uh, that there was there was uh, done purposely by the Democratic Party. They brought the black church in. They 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 they, they uh, didn't give them direction. They gave them the fact, you know, uh, give up. Uh, the, the, you know, they took the, the the masculinity out of the the man's home. Yeah. I mean, you can see. I mean, it's so easy to see what happened because, I mean, I was there, but, I mean, you can just see what happened. And so now wow. we have so many so many black men today, young black, they're in, they're in and out of prison. Uh, they commit so many crimes and so many of them in prison. Yep. Like, I know, I know somebody lives in Chicago, a police officer. They have to let them go. Like, if they carjack you, they have to let them go because <laughs> the, the, the Cook County is so full. They're, they're, they're trying to lock up more murderers than yeah. anything because... So, the, so they get to come back out, hit you in the head. Yep. You know, they, they, and they, remember, there's no job. There, listen, there is no job in all these inner cities ran by these black Democrats. Like the police, the police the chief was black, the mayor's black, 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 black. Yeah. Okay? But they bring no jobs, no opportunity, no new schools, no infrastructure, no trace. And, and, and black people, as soon as you go down there and demand some of these things for your, you and your community, all some black Democrats have to say is the word rice, racism. And they go into a trance, and they go back, and then they 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 go yelling at each other about this racism holding us back, and you know then they have demonstrations. But all the all the black Democrat got to do is say that one word, and they forget what they came down there for. Let yeah. Yeah. Um, Big Bump is saying it's similar to John Wayne's statements. Remember the great John Wayne, an actor of, of in westerns who was a, yeah 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 definitely remember yeah. I, I, I think he was a Christian. Point. I think he was fairly conservative. Uh, he said that blacks were had a better life here than anywhere else. Facts. Yeah. yeah yep. Now think about what I said about slavery. Like I said, I wasn't there, but think about what I said. Yeah. They, they didn't have, you know what I mean? They, they, they were more moral. They were more moral. They worked together. They, 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 they came together. They, 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 and they, they were workers. You know what I'm saying? Today's young people, they don't even want to work. So it, even if you brought back jobs, even if, you know, if you bring them back, they're not going to work them anyway because they've been conditioned not to work. Most of them have high blood pressure in high school. Mm. They don't die. Alice is in their 20s. I mean, just the whole culture is just a culture of death and destruction. Yeah. And so, and then they will all, the, the liberal media and the Democrats will always promote, you know, some rapper that, 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 that promotes wickedness, you know, death and murder and, 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 uh, and prison and, 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 and uh, debauchery. You know, that, that's who the, 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 the Democrats and the liberals promote those kind of people. And for people like yeah. me, you know, they try to, you know, to suppress us, to to call us names, to to to, to try to, uh, you know, uh, uh, propagandize against uh, any kind of knowledge that would come to these people. <laughs> and it's like, okay, now they're bringing the migrants in. So, uh, you know, so now if they do, if they happen to bring back trade schools and better schools, it's gonna be because most of the blacks are just dying off, and you know, what I'm saying they they they, they so sickly. And they're so weak and so so weak minded, so feeble minded that they'll bring that they might bring back the trade schools and the good schools for them because they don't need the blacks anymore. Because once those people start populating, it's only forty million blacks, right? Mm. That number's been the same for the last hundred years due to due to abortion and you know what I'm saying murdering each other, whatever. Right. And so 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 once Poor these people health. start populating, yep. you're gonna see they're really gonna they're really gonna like, lead these people out to just just die because remember. And um, all these major cities, they have they have food deserts. They don't even have stores that go even get, feed themselves in. Food I mean, deserts so means they don't have they they have places that are unhealthy. They have fast food joints right, and, right, right, and right. like Seven Elevens. Right, right, you're right, right. And, they have a gas station where you go buy a pack of crackers for three dollars. You got a whole buy a whole box for a dollar fifty. But they wouldn't buy the healthful food, food if they had it. They, like, okay, okay, they, you're right. You're right. They ain't been conditioned. You're right. They have <laughs> yeah. not been conditioned. You're and you right. can go to Seven Eleven get a banana or apple. Most Seven right, Elevens. Right. Yeah. But they, I, I, if you watch their shopping carts, 
doing, you know, when they get their little, their little food stamps, their welfare. Right. It's nothing but pizza, pizza puff, yeah. hot dogs. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's there the was... worst food that you wouldn't even eat in prison. And they feed it to their kids, so their sure. kids are obese. By the time they're 10, their kids are so obese, high blood pressure, because they've been conditioned now. They have been programmed this way through the Black Democrat Party. Though. I mean, that, it ain't all their faults. Right. Because they, they've been programmed this way. Yeah, they they've been programmed from a very young age. Have yeah. understanding for them. Don't look down on the blacks. Um, right. Right. Oh, there was. Right. Oh, yeah, you mentioned you mentioned uh, the the way that they eat. You reminded me of this gal who was popping off at the mouth and making a mess at that one. Like, I don't know if it was a Burger King or what. It was like a a uh, fast food restaurant. With her hugging her, with hugging her kid on the side, and her kid hugging her, the little boy, uh, fat boy, and she's like, mm-hmm. "I come here." Somebody in the chat or in the comment section said, quoted her as saying, "I come here every day. You go to a fast food joint every day? No, <laughs> unless well, you, you know get a salad it, or something it, from it, there." No, no. It, 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 I, I know a lady that she did, she delivers. Uh, what they call that? Instacart and. Um, yeah. And door dad, she said, I literally went to these black homes. She's black. And she said, I'll bring a big old gallon of juice. I mean, not juice, like, you know, like uh, uh, corn syrup, you know, not not like apple juice, but you know that cheap Soda or whatever. Juice. Okay, yeah. And a big bag of chips and this old big old fat dude sitting on the, 20-something years old, sitting on the couch, mm. weighing 300 pounds, look like he's about to die on a diabetic stroke or uh, heart disease at any moment. So this is, he's too fat to go walk down the street and get it. He had door dash bring it to bring it to the house. I mean that's that's just a black culture that's getting so so out of hand and and and, and, and so so deep in in, in in despair and 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 into hell. Yeah. That and and, and nobody's doing that. And another thing I told you all the time: black people always waiting on a politician or entertainer to save them when they can save themselves. They 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 have been conditioned by the Democrats and the liberals, like you know, just keep waiting on the savior. We gonna give them to you. It's like been over a hundred years, I know, but just keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Because they, they done got so lazy minded that, that, that they don't want they don't want to try to save themselves. The men are weak. Yeah, not them sheep male. The men are weak. The right. women are you know, weak <laughs> and, like and, and they masculine. So the whole culture is is, is is designed to fail, and they just sitting around just waiting to die, waiting to fail. That's all. That's all it is. That's the the, the 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 young kids, most of them can't even read and write. Man, they can't even read and write. That's why I like JLP's message of hope, overcome anger, face, r- face the reality of your anger for your mother and from your mother, for and from your mother and uh, grandmothers and uh, your father's not being there to or not uh, protecting you from the mama spirit. The because Jimmy Carter, you mentioned Jimmy Carter earlier. Yeah. I think that he's a mama, and yeah, yeah, so he's yeah, yeah. so he's trying to help. In my, in my imagination, I imagine that he thinks that he's helping because he's one of those nicey, nice Christians. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, ni- he's 99 years old or something, right? Um, yeah. This yeah. guy, so you said that he did something that undermined education and trades, yeah. school and yeah. all that stuff. I think the education system got undermined maybe a century ago or more. But, um, but yeah, even further with with each president with these big mama ideas uh but jlp's message forgiveness then you're then you're clear-minded again and you can uh overcome that darkness and despair and uh, and death of throwing your life away with junk food and uh yeah. inactivity Alcohol it's a great message and, it's a message yeah. for all uh, no 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 i agree and the, 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 the democrats and the liberals love to put that victimhood See, people have got that victimhood mentality. Right. Like said. Victims are losers, and it's you no, don't want to be a victim. They, they, they will blame everybody. They don't want to get off their butts and do nothing. They're lazy. They're lame. They, they're weak. They're pathetic. So the, the Democrats and the liberals give this give them this illusion that it's not their fault. Just, just stay right. there and complain. Stay victim-minded. Don't, don't ever become a victor. You know what I'm saying? Right. Stay victim-minded. And that, that just leaves them in their death and their misery because... Anytime you have a victimhood mentality, that means that Satan is, is your God and you are ruled by these evil spirits because you will sit there and die in misery instead of get off your butt and do something about your situation. Yeah. 
Nice, man. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Hey, I just had to say hey to you guys. I heard what you were talking about, and I, you know, talking about you know how the, you know, the crime, and, and I had to, you know, point out the fact that you know there was no jobs, and right. it's done this way on purpose, and you know they, they, you know, to live in the inner city right now, these ghettos cost you nineteen hundred dollars a month to live in a ghetto now. That's wild. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. They paid nineteen hundred dollars, then they got all these high gas prices, all these high taxes. So now, what's going to happen? You're going to resort to crime because there is no job. You're going to resort to crime, and that's why the prison population is so high. You know, because they give them little scraps, just enough, so that they can they, 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 they can try to devour each other to try to survive, just like in penitentiary. It's just, Stay. It's just a, the, the urban is just one big penitentiary. That's all it is. Yeah, a, 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 that's a spoiling effect. They're spoiled uh, by the welfare, and then it's 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 not a like you said. It's not enough. It's not it's not life, no. and so they're uh, no. they're go they're going into darkness. Whether it's yeah. crime or dishonesty or victim mindset, feeling sorry for yourself and misery. It's it's right. a it's. Cr- it's corrupting and it's a trap. They call it a welfare yeah. trap. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Keith in Illinois. So, oh yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. You got, you got, take it easy. Hey, come All right. soon. Yeah, you too. Right. Bye. And shout out to the blacks. Nice. Guys, we're at the uh, bottom of the hour. I have uh, to take a break. And this is sort of a long one. Um, I want to play Stephen Wiley, though. It's Black History Month. Uh, I will get to more of your super chats. Linya and Shin, I'm remiss in not reading your super chats from Streamlabs. And there are many more from, uh, from buymeacoffee.com slash the Heek Report. But this is best friend. It's nice. It's Christian. It's Stephen Wiley from the 1988 album Wrap It Up. Hope you enjoy it, you musical Philistines. I'll be back. It's like five, it's more than five minutes long, but here it is. Let's let's go into it. Frustration. I tell him where I'm at and 
and I never hold back. I can be honest with him, and that's a matter of fact. Best friend. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying it. My best friend. Yeah, musical Philistines. Vacation Bible School. Best friend. Hank must have heard this at VBS. He said he'd always be my best friend. <laughs> One-sided relationship, says Kevin Howe. <laughs> friend is a woman word, says Lin Yan Chin. Jesus is not your friend. But he called us friends in the Bible. It's in the Bible, Lin Yan. He understands my problem, knows exactly what I'm feeling. He's the only one who can provide immediate healing. He's always watching me. He's healing. got a helping hand to lend. One thing I'm sure of, Jesus is my best friend. Best friend. I like when they spell it. Jesus is my best friend. Jesus is Gundam he mechanic. Said he'd always be my best friend. Best friend. He said he'd always be my best friend. So good. knows exactly what I'm feeling. He's the only one who can provide immediate healing. He's always watching me. He's got a helping hand to lend. One thing I'm sure of, Jesus is my best friend. Best friend. <laughs> Hate cranks this best up when driving friend. his Prius. I don't dox my car. Jesus is my, my best friend. friend. I don't say whether or not I had a Prius. I have a Prius and I don't say whether or not. He said he always be my and I don't say whether or not I'm vaxxed. Jesus is my best friend. Spiders he catch my attention. Always be my best friend. We're looking at a spider on the video here. He said he always be my best friend. B E S T L R I E N D. B E S T L R I E N D. B E S T L R I E N D. <laughs> that spells best friend, kids. He said he'd always be my best friend. Jesus is. Hate with a good hair. Well, friend. thank you guys for bearing with me through the fun, my opinion, music. I got more super chats to get through. Lin Yen Chin, a day or two ago, said, stated, Lord Good Hair. Please ask Sparkle Blouse and the Prince of Prance to get Streamlabs so I can donate to them. I don't think your YouTube likes my comments, even though I am the customer and they are the servant. Very backwards world we live in. Uh, so do you hear that, fellas? Fellow uh, hosts on the JLP network, S go to Streamlabs.com and sign up. And hook up your PayPal and Stripe or whatever you're supposed to hook up and or multiple different ways. So you can take credit card, debit card, uh, PayPal, and whatever else. Uh, Nick, the American Anchor Baby, and Joelle Friday. Because uh, Lin Yen Chin either doesn't know how or cannot or has problems with or refuses to do something new meaning go to uh, buy me a coffee. It's better to have more ways than uh, one to get uh, people to support, that people can, where people can support you where they prefer to support you. Nice. Thank you, Lin Yen Chin. Lin Yen Chin also has a super chat. Your anger, this is also yesterday, anger is a reaction caused by the infection called sin, quote unquote. It is an infection so it is not our nature, but a sickness we must overcome. Mark, meaning Mark in Los Angeles, the caller whom I talked, with whom I talked yesterday about anger, who said it's part of human nature. It's human nature. Mark, don't you want superconductor, superconductor type synapses, which make you smart? Superconductor, I shouldn't have said it childishly. 
superconductor type synapses which make you smart. It's how JLP and I keep up with smart folk because Lin Yen Chin and JLP are both black, partly at least, and slow. And yet, they are anger free zones. And, um, and so their uh, sight is clear and they can function at a, at a high level. They're optimizing their low IQ. Although they're low IQ, they're optimized IQ. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Ling Yen Jin. Uh, that's, a, that's a nice input for your friend uh, Mark in Los Angeles. Some super chats over on buymeacoffee.com. Slash the Hague Report. C on C. Coffee emoji. Samson going on dates? Question mark, question mark. What do you mean? <laughs> Shocked emoji. Ooh. Ooh. The Palestinians coming for Samson. I call it Samson, but it's Samson, huh? There's no P in Samson, huh? Samson. Since I was a child, I guess my mother never corrected me. C on C also bought another coffee with no message. Are the Palestinians coming for Samson? Are you? I'm not dating any Palestinians, or I don't think. <laughs> did I? What did I say that indicated that I'm? <laughs> I don't dox whether I date. <laughs> Popcorn thump keg bought a coffee. So at first, okay. Popcorn thump keg. The confused one <laughs> bought a coffee, saying so. At first, the message was, "We don't know what really qualifies." Who really qualifies until there is no more affirmative action? The Supreme Court strikes it down, and you move to, well, there's de facto affirmative action. You don't know that? I didn't move to there. I said that long before the so-called Supreme Court struck it down. Because in the state of California, so-called affirmative action in the college campuses has been illegal for a long time. But you know that there is de facto affirmative action. I did not move any goalposts, just so you know. Just to clarify, correct your misunderstanding on that. Uh, so if there wasn't a way to, quote-unquote, fully remove AA, why mention it? Because it's reality. You are swimming in the reality of people's kissing up culture. You don't, you don't want to know that? You don't want to be reminded of that? What, what do you, what's your problem? It's that same come-through-the-front-door talking point that I mentioned, which I'm not sure what he means, that mentioned that people have, as it relates to immigration, the people say they don't want immigrants coming through the front door either, but it sounds good. No, you're, you're sadly mistaken, sorely mistaken. There are people who want people coming into the country through the front door, um, meaning come through the, in the right way. Is that what you mean? Okay, probably what you mean. There are some people on the right who want immigrants coming right lawfully, but there are many of us who don't want them coming at all, indeed. Indeed, we want to slow that down because both illegal and legal immigration are a problem. Are you pretending that that's not the case? <laughs> there is a lot of fear-mongering going on around, about black people, says this person. Really? Where? You can usually identify the people that spread that kind of garbage because they don't leave their house after dark. <laughs> oh, are you referring to me? Because I'm the only one who said that I don't leave my house after dark and you think I'm fear-mongering? <laughs> Crime is going out of control, people getting killed, uh, and it's, it's fear-mongering? Okay. You can pretend that it's fear-mongering. It's real- it's stating reality. Shouldn't be afraid, but you should be, uh, alert and wise in, uh, in your- how you go, how you live your life. Be wise, definitely. But okay, popcorn slum cake, you can- you can nitpick. You can be an ankle biter. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. C on C bought a coffee. Um, three coffees, actually. Thank you guys for all your coffees, including popcorn stump cake. Um, of course. Well, right now, seems like evil's mission is to control the men's mind in any way possible so they can't think clearly and work towards the prosperity of his country. That's what anger does. It makes you not be able to think clearly. It makes a, cons a computer science major not be able to think clearly. And always look outward and not inward. 
no pun intended. <laughs> um, towards the prosperity of this country. Yeah, that's, what, that's another thing I love about Trump, Sion. He's for the prosperity and peace and uh, getting along. Without getting along, you don't have business. Without high trust society, you don't have, you can't do businesses and thrive in life. Any form of addiction for the man uh, is what they're about, says Sion, I think she's saying. No examples for the women to be led, she says. Be careful, Sion, you don't want to fall into man bashing. But you are correct. You are correct. You don't want to have this spirit of the man basher. But you are uh, correct. It's just like you said nothing factually inaccurate, Sion. It's, and, I, and I don't know. I'm, not, I'm just a warning for all ladies and gentlemen and blacks and whites and everybody. Because there are blacks who descend into hating the blacks. There are um, whites even who descend into to hating the blacks or hating. And that's not good. It's like my uh, issue with my discussion with my caller Mark yesterday. He said nothing factually inaccurate with regard to uh, the mixed guys being more radically radical and anti-white or, or whatever. The mixed guys like Obama and apparently Joe and Phoenix. And there was, there's these other guys like Jason Williams. Was he a, a, a mixed race like black actor guy who was also white and he praised the black queens and he's an actor kind of like his pretty boy actor in some doctor soap opera show type thing am i confusing am i saying the na right name anybody remember years back and he was pretending like r white racism is this real thing and all problem and all that stuff uh that is true, that the mixed guys do, do uh, fall into this hatred towards whites so commonly. But, don't be mad about it, don't be vicious about it. Yes, there is a war against the whites. It's not fear-mongering, it's telling the truth about it. Don't be afraid. Fear not. Do not worry, you know? <laughs> Clip Hake saying, Black Queens, please, says Carver. <laughs> I say that in part, Sion, because, uh, you know, for example, some of you guys and gals love JLP. You see him as a strong, a man who's strong and a good example of a man. But then you'll hate all the other men. And so you think, oh, I just hate weak men. No, you hate all men if you hate one man. Huey P. Newton, Colin Kaepernick. That's right. And many, many more, says Big Bump. It's true. <laughs> uh, and Big Bump defends Hake as not owning a Prius. And he, the schmack scene, he can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> I didn't know Huey P. Newton was part white. Colin Kaepernick, the guy who sat like a bump on a log, disrespecting the flag and the country and the military and, and everything, and the police, and lying and smearing the police, accusing them of uh, getting away with murder and going on paid leave. Uh, excuse me, are you talking about the blacks or the police? Getting away with murder, you know? Because murder clearance rates in the black communities is, is dismally low. Abysmal. So, uh, yes... Keep a, keep a cheerful spirit. Do not fall into resenting the possessed who are evil. Because you yourself are possessed and evil. Nice, Sion. Uh, great super chat. Let me just double check. Oh, I might as well open the treasure chest, guys. Opening the treasure chest. Give you your Obama's sunken chest redistribution of lemons. Speaking of welfare, for the red-headed stepchildren called the, the D-Live supporters, shout out to Misty for the ice cream, I guess, and Noah's Art Kansas for the lemons. Thank you guys for the support. That's cool. And Beta Legs gives me a... M He's... <laughs> Never I'm not going to say what Beta Legs did. <laughs> 
My goodness. We're at five minutes till. Let me show you Gaza. Let me show you Gaza real quick. A few pictures in the news folder. It's just, you know, picture of something, a couple of pictures, stuff that's going on in the world. Could be worse, I guess, you know? I don't know. I don't really have a point to this, but uh, look at that. Look at this photograph. That's, that's wild. This is a Getty Images photo, AFP, a, a French outlet. Getty owns a bunch of pictures. Look at how this destruction, it's a destroyed city. Uh, Palestinians, in this photograph, beautiful photograph, really. Although it's destroyed, it's just like, isn't it a beautiful photograph? I love it. But I don't love, you know, I'm not saying I love the destruction, obviously. <laughs> Some people, it may not be that obvious because they're prone to believe to take things badly. Some people are prone to take things badly when you're, when you're angry. Palestinians walk past buildings destroyed in this photograph, right? During Israeli strikes in Beit Lahia. Be- belt? B-E-I-T, new word, L-A-H-I-A is the name of this city. New name. Uh, Northern Gaza, February 26th, A.D., 2024, amid continued battles between Israel and the Palestinian militant group Hamas. So Hamas is actually fighting back, because <laughs> I never hear anything about Palestinian, I mean, Israeli casualties. They call is- Israelis uh, cowards, some people do. One of my callers, guests. But I just, I mainly just wanted to show you that. There are a couple of other photos, but I don't really have time for them. There's 100 de- dead, 700 injured in a chaotic incident in Gaza. IDF opened fire as people waited for food and water, I think. Something like that. Aid trucks accidentally rammed people. Chaos. Terrible. So, woof. People having rough lives. Those are some headlines, but I gotta end, guys. Well, Friday's coming up next. This track is, yes, we're playing a whole bunch of music because it's the end of Black History Month and blacks play a lot of music. This is uh, a Negro spiritual. This is in honor of Gaza. (laughs) Shout out to Palestine. And we love Israel too. Uh, I'm Troubled in Mind by Spiritual Workshop Paris. Adios, America. Catch Joel Friday TV next. Bye. When laden with troubles and burdened with grief, to Jesus in secret our glory be. The Gazans are troubled in mind. I'm troubled in mind. But Jesus is helping you. <laughs> Bill shaking his head at Hake singing. in the Middle East, or at least in your hearts. Those of you whom God chooses. Adios, America. Bye.